Well, I thought it was going to have to be here at 7 o'clock tonight to set off our prayer for the first uh, next to seven uh, uh, Tuesdays. But uh, I wound up being here anyway with a flat tire and with Randy helping me. <laughs> so we're going to say our little prayer right now and uh, ask people to pray for our country and uh, pray for all the people that will be praying, and praying tonight at 7 o'clock and for the next seven Tuesdays, uh, praying for our country to return to godly principles. Randy, anything you want to say in particular? I'm looking forward to it. And so am I, and so is Miss June. And we thank you for coming up with the idea, Miss June. And, it, and it's, a, it's a good thing to spread the word, and Randy's spread the word with the Baptist Association, and we've contacted him too, and then I ran several posts on my Facebook page and YouTube page. So we're getting the word out there, and people will be praying all over the country for uh, returning to God the principles. Get out there and register to vote, and I'll be at the Optimus Club tomorrow and getting the uh, the county clerk's uh, vi video on on the importance of uh, registering until upper October the 7th. You can go register still. And uh, we're not telling you how to register. We're just telling you to get out and use your uh, the scriptures and, and uh, common sense and godly principles. Right, Randy? Amen. Amen, and we love you. 859-750-0000. If you have questions, or look us up on YouTube or Facebook under Travels with Dr. John Stevenson. Amen. Catch you later. Love you.
is where I'll be uh, Friday night, right here on the corner at Fairhaven Rescue Mission, and uh, Changing Lives, 1984. Randy Wallace and I'll be here, 7 o'clock Friday evening, singing to the men, for some every fourth Friday for about 30 years. Bless their hearts. Bless our hearts. <laughs> We're still alive to do it. Don't forget folks out there. Coming up Friday, Simon Kenton. If you went to Simon Kenton, graduated in 1961. You need to come on down, serve on the committee. Log Cabin Restaurant, 12 o'clock, Friday. We're going to have to lay some plans for a class reunion if we get a chance. So, you guys out there, Skip, and uh, Arlene, and uh, Donna, all of the ones that are still around, Pam Butler, bless your heart, get a hold of her again, Myra Ashcraft, she's gone on to heaven, we lost her. Lost uh, Pat Carver the other day, too, uh, this past December, unfortunately. I'm going to turn back around here so I can go back and see if there's anybody in there at the CAC office. Since I've still got time, 258, they might be open. So I will turn around and go back. As my mother would say, don't leave a stone unturned down, Johnny. He said, yes, ma'am. Opens us up to our beautiful, beautiful, courthouse here in Kenton County. Little rain. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail pierced hands than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin's red sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. God bless America. God bless Kentucky. Listen to WIOK 107.5 FM on the radio dial. Tri-State Gospel, Box 50, Falmouth, Kentucky. Four ten forty zip code eight five nine seven five zero 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 zero. Join us on Facebook and our YouTube. Well, I just happened to be driving down in the territory down here in Covington, Kentucky. Come upon about, uh, about 7th Street, I guess, here. Uh, what's our address here at the Lee's Restaurant? I don't know about all city. I'm 6th or 7th Street right here. 6th and Scott. And you want to get a good meal, folks. It's got a drive through window here. Or you can come inside and meet some of the wonderful people in here. Now, your name is? Angie. Angie, and who do we have back over here? 
Marcus. Marcus and Andrea. Andrea. Well, God bless you both. Nice to be here with you. And just remember, everybody loves somebody sometime. Makes no difference when, or where, or how. Everybody loves somebody sometime. And if you love your chicken, you stop at least restaurant <laughs> this time. Praise the Lord and pass the emanation of God the prophet. Find the principles. Red, yellow, brown, black, and white. We're all precious in Jesus' sight. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Join us on Facebook and YouTube. Travels with Dr. John Stevenson, former superintendent of education, Commonwealth of Kentucky. Praise the Lord. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. I look forward to my chicken. <laughs>
back in 1974 with Gil Hammond over at uh, Fort Mitchell Baptist. And the ironic thing is that it's a 100-year anniversary for Fort Mitchell Baptist where we started. And uh, uh, tomorrow uh, night they're having a service there with uh, one of the gentlemen from the uh, Baptist, or big gospel group. But uh, then they're having a, a thing Saturday, a supper I'm going to go to. And um, unfortunately, Gil cannot get out anymore. Gil Hammond and, and Jan, they're, he's 85 and I'm 81, and he's just s slowed down to where he can't. They still have the radio station. I was thrilled to be able to come here this morning, though, and film this like I've filmed it before with uh, Dick West and everybody there. And, and uh, who was the gentleman before Jim Morrison, or Jim Morrison was there at the same time, but, but his, the guy that actually started, and his, him and his son, and they, they we went to Florida. What's the guy's name? I got it written down, but since I had the virus three Christmases ago, the brain is shot. There are some people who would say it was shot before that, but, <laughs> but anyway, so I've got that. And then Friday night, Randy Wallace and I are going to the homeless shelter at Fair Haven. And uh, we've done that now every fourth Friday for 30 years. So I have to go to that instead of the Fort Mitchell Baptist thing, but I'll be there the next day. And then I'll be over here, hopefully for your dad at four o'clock. And uh, I can't say enough about being here. Uh, I know you might think, well, why don't he come back more often? Well, my wife and I are both very ill, to be honest with you. She has Crohn's disease and we're going through some very difficult, tough times. But I want to assure my friends of one thing for certain, that, and, and if you've got any questions about it, you can ask me directly. I have never taken a dime for any senior citizen in my lifetime, and I've helped out a lot of them. And you can be accused of anything, and as the judge would know, uh, there's an old saying when you take the Alford plea, and that is uh, uh, at a grand jury, they can indict a ham, ham sandwich. Well, they indicted me and I wasn't even there. Never got a chance to answer a question, never got a chance to say what I did and what I didn't do. And, and, and my wife and I decided since it was hurting our health and her health so bad that we just gave it up and, and withdrew our lawsuit and, and uh, let, them, let them have the $130,000 and leave it in God's hands. And, uh, but I have a clear conscience on all of it. And I, I just want to, you to know as Christians, it is the right thing to do to be obedient to God. It, I'm, I want to do one more thing here because it means so much to me. And that is, I want to sing you this song because it's true. so beautiful to me you are so beautiful to me can't you see you're everything I hope for you're everything I, I, I need you are so beautiful to God. Minute to prayer breakfast, you are beautiful to God, and you are beautiful to my sight this morning, driving up here and seeing you all, and being a part of this wonderful service for the Lord. Thank God you. bless you.
que Deus. Amém. Senhor, eu vou ver de United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joe. Happy birthday to you. And many more. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad it is. And be glad it is. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad it is. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord 
Amen. 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 John 16, page But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong place about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father where you uh, work. I now stand condemned. And about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears.
Time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Things that really stuck out to me reading that one without the Holy Spirit more trouble, more big trouble. And when the Holy Spirit came, the disciples were completely different. They were, were on fire and they led a big revival. I wouldn't be a revival, it just brought a lot of people to Christ. And I was thinking about what he said, Jesus told them, he said, because you love me, the Father hears your prayer. Uh, he was even saying, you know, that I, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was basically saying, God hears your prayers because because of me, you know. That that's pretty amazing, you know. I've been reading through the Old Testament, and if you went before God in any way other than through the priest, you 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 probably would die. And even the priest, if they didn't do it the right way, to a to an Aaron's. Moses' and brother, two of Aaron's uh, sons, and priests, and they did it the wrong way, and they died instantly. And I think because of Jesus on the cross, died for our sins, rose, took our place, sent the Holy Spirit, I mean, because of that, only because of that, not because of us, but because of that, we can we can come into the Holy of Holies and pray, pray to God and, and ask Him. And uh, that just that's just to me, that's just Amazing. We take, take that for granted. That's what I was in there. I was just looking at that cross. The cross is everything. You know, working for the cross. Jesus didn't die. His blood wasn't shed. Um, we, we wouldn't be able to do this. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for our salvation. And, and I was thinking, you know, about the weather. I want to pray for the weather because I got, I got a couple of. Um, Nephew's coming in from out of town and nieces and I'm hearing maybe they won't make it because of this weather because of the airports are going to be shut down and planes are going to be delayed. So I pray for our families. We're all trying to get in the town. So I would I would pray for travels for our family. I, I think it's important. For those of you that did not know Jim Morrison. For those of you that did not know Jim Morrison, Jeff Stead, he was a great man. And I think it's important that we just take seconds or a minute here to offer up just thoughts about Jim. You'll be going through this a lot tonight, of course. But he was such a courteous, gentle man. He was a gentle man. And it was important to me in my life and being here that I got to meet him. And your family is so important to the community, and what he did was so important to the community. And I just said that now he has gone to the Father, but I know that he has left an impression in my heart and in others as well. Amen. Amen. We got 
really from my dad is his integrity. That was that was his main thing. Legacy was integrity. Uh, one time he got into some kind of battle with the, with the company and they they wrongly accused him of something and when they found out he was right and he wasn't wrong, he asked they asked my dad, what can we do to make this right? He said, give me back my integrity. That, that's the man I know. He didn't, he didn't want money. He just wanted them to put, put Amen. the rumors of dad's credit. That's all he wanted was his integrity back. Anybody that doesn't run a business or trying to run a church or anything, you don't have integrity. You, got, you don't have anything. That's what I remember about my dad. John. He was loved down at the barber shop at Sparrow and Newton's uh, barber shop and yeah. uh, Todd and Daryl there and I sang to him down there one day when he came in, I think with his other son, brought him in and and he stopped to talk to me for a minute or two, which was he said I, I just loved him, to be honest with you. Darryl, hey. Darryl actually came to Dad's house and cut his hair the last few times. Mark, did you have something? Uh, I was just going to comment how friendly Dad was to me. I was good. Yeah. I mean, sitting down talking to him, he couldn't have been 30 years ago when I first started running the program. When I walked out, he said, Mark, I love you. I just really did. I loved him too. Sorry, I've heard so much. Yeah. So um, when I was uh, looking, uh, thinking about going to another church, and I was investigating other churches before I decided to reconcile and stay at home, um, someone had invited me to their church. And then they had a uh, bingo ticket, so they went where the kids went uh, to the bingos, and I was there all alone. And their dad, I mean, uh, Jim was there, and he just took me under his wing. Um, and uh, he introduced me to everybody who sat next to me, um, and I had a wonderful time in his church, and he made that like, just an awesome. They just saw me and knew me from here, and um, knew that uh, someone wasn't coming, and just uh, um, took me in and made me part of the whole church. It's just a loving hearing. Amen. Thank you, Brian. still have the answer from out from last week. If anybody wants to sign us, you know, either bring it in or reach out to the truck and put your John Hancock on there. Anything else before we close? Hey. Yeah, I got a text just at the beginning of breakfast this morning. My sister collapsed last night, and uh, she's, uh, they took her in an so I don't know what's going on. Good. Uh, so she, uh, apparently not, uh, she's 13 years old. So apparently she's not uh, eating, drinking, or uh, taking her medicine. She's not going really to try back up at all. What's her name? Her name's Dad. Uh, Dan, would you take that? Dear Lord, we pray for Beth this morning, and we pray for the Morrison family this morning. 
Dear Lord, uh, be with them. Give them the strength and the courage to carry on. And dear Lord, as we go forth today, let us do your will. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mark. I, I'd just like to mention a person I know of. His name is Peter. He was living out in San Francisco. And he uh, got a bad infection in his leg. He had to have surgery. And, um, he's obviously in the uh, uh, physical health, but I, I think spiritual health also. He was lift up Peter. That's anybody else. Leave the tables and chairs where you are. Leave the tables off. And I'll be with you. We've got time to have a great day.